Why is it that Leonard Howell gets most of the attention when people speak about the, the, oh, the original okay, people of okay. Rastafari? Ones would say it was Marcus Garvey who had announced, look to Africa, a black king will be crowned. So he was the prophet who made that declaration. But historically, it was not Marcus Garvey. He just repeated the words from Reverend Webb, the Baptist from America. So Marcus got that credit. But when we research and read and read, we find say, hey, he's not Marcus, Reverend Webb. But why we say more Howell? Because Marcus Garvey and Howell was in US in Harlem. Marcus was deported to Jamaica and also led on Howell. So when Leonard Howell sight of Rastafari, he wanted to be on Marcus Garvey's platform to announce his majesty. Marcus Garvey said, no, I am a Christian. You go somewhere else. And from that, that make a serious uh, line on how he'll tried. So he'll hit the street with Eilis Selassie as God and King, Marcus Garvey was not in that Eilis Selassie divinity. And we learned, so, due to how, how he was persecuted for Rastafari and not Marcus Garvey, how he was sent to the asylum, how he was sent to prison, how he was beaten. So we can't give Marcus Garvey that credit historically, no. Having done the research, he said no. Garvey is not you. It's Leonard Howell. He's the man who is the father of the faith, who declared the divinity of his majesty and, and stood by it and not Marcus Garvey. How will live it, you know? Marcus Garvey has announced it. Marcus Garvey says that it's in the time of Mussolini invasion. Marcus Garvey said that his Eilis Lassia is a coward. It is in the Black Man magazine. And he said, Eilis Lassia is not royal blood. And those to illuminate Marcus Garvey. For those who are students of Leonard Howell and Rastafari, we know as fact. But we love Marcus Garvey the same way, as a great man. But he's not Rastafari. And he has not he has lived up to Rastafari teachings as we see, as growing up and being learned and see how the history of the movement is. Was, That's why we speak to that. Was Leonard Howell a Bible man? Leonard Howell was a Bible man. Leonard Howell was a mason. No, the Bible man was Joseph Nathaniel Hebert. Let me say, no, it is not Howell alone, you know. You have Joseph Nathaniel Hebert, you have Robert Hines, and you have, you have Archibald Dunkley. All four of them declared His Majesty Divinity. But Howell was the man who stood out more and went to prison. So, you know, you see Howell was like the leader among all the four. So all four come together and make one declaration at separate times, you see. Then Howell uh, made Pinnacle. On the board, Pinnacle and have the, the residence for, 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 for ones who, which is, no, create a sustainable communi community that have farming and entrepreneurship and coal burning. And Howell was the first ganja planter in Jamaica, too. So as, many as, as, they, as, they, as they mentioned, Pinnacle, I, I really want to ask their question, like how important do I think um, the Howell lights are in, in the history of Jamaica? Because I realize that majority of Jamaicans never heard of the Howell lights before, but I feel like they are a crucial, important part to the Jamaican culture, even, even as it relates to any individual Jamaican, Rastafari or who is not Rastafari. How do I say it, how the Howell lights influence Jamaican culture? Leonard Howell and Howell Lights, you can't separate them. They are just one. Yes, sir. Leonard Howell is the leader of them and the father of them. See? So the Howell Lights were the ones who were there, were maintaining the property, were maintaining liberty, were maintaining chanting, were maintaining. But I remember, you know, at Pinnacle was a revival setting, you know. Yes, sir. But the importance about Pinnacle is a 
Indian African combination because Howell is Ganganguru Maharaj, which is Hindu. Flacco, I have to hold you right there. Hold on, Flacco, right? <laughs> please elaborate more because I read a lot about Leonard Howell and, and, and did my research. And please speak about the Indian influence on Rastafari. Right. It is crucial to know of the Indian influence on Rastafari because the Indians, Hindu, East Indians came with Ganja. It was not, it was not named Ganja at the time, it was Kali because they, the goddess Kali, Ganja goddess Kali, that's how we get Kali weed. When I grew up, I never know about no Hindu. Ganja. Hindu, see me? So, Lalu, who was close, who was a Hindu, because Indians came as indentured workers, you know. They came, at, they never came in, come in chains and shackles, so they were at, Tridega Park, that's below the same place where Howell is, Tridega Park, St. Catherine. So they had a, a lot of influence on the Africans who were there, including Howell. So they brought in Ganja there. Therefore, the Indian gift of Ganja to the Africans who were there was amalgamation between two cultures. That is, that is how Ganja is so important in Rastafari liberty due to the Indians that brought it there. Now, Lalu, what most people don't know about, was the guide of Leonard Howell, and it was Lalu who named Howell Ganganguru Maharaj, which is important because that's a Hindu name. I mean, king, great king. So how the, the Hindu, side and, and the African side merged now and become Rastafari. Then the Africans came with the drums now. That is why you have the Naya Bingi and the drums and the ganja, which is straight Howell and Indian coming together. Indians come with ganja, Africans come with drum. So the, the, the chanting of the of the burro drums, because it was not Naya Bingi drum at the time, it was burro drum. And the Africans came with Pocomania and Kumina. Because most of our lives they play Kumina. They don't play Naya Bingi. That's right. So when you look on the early history of Rastafari, you see from Pinnacle where the ganja smoking came about. Because the Indians came with them Kochi and then Chalice and then Hot Rod and then Sappy Clots. You see me? So all that coming because the Indians never left him ganja. I've, I've, every, I've, sorry, you, Flag, I have one question. Did the did the vegetarian was did the Indians influence the idea of vegetarian eating? Yes, man. Yes. Good. The Indians came. Okay. You, you see, Rastafari and Baba Shanti have uh, the, the the twenty-one days separation with the woman and her menses. The Indians bring that, you know. They live that, you know. I tell liberty is Indian bring that too. No salt. Well, I, the salt came from the slave ship. Wherein, when you throw the slaves overboard, it was said that him, it was said that him salt, because you threw him in salt water and him did. So man said, "No, nah, eat no salt because him just salt if you get overthrown." But did not did not consume enough salt came from the Indians. They never eat salt, and them are vegetarians. So that influence the vegetarian life of early Rastafari at Pinnacle. And the ganja was there. And the, the men's cycle of the woman when him separate from him from him king man, that was learned from Pinnacle. So that is the Indian influence on Rastafari culture. Most people don't know that. But they don't do no research on it. That is right up. There are others too. You see? And like now, the, you know, say Indians have in roti and in, and in curry and, and basic vegetable dishes. That's Indian liberty. Africans never have that in the early days. No. He learned that. So what the, what the Africans do, he they came when the Indians finished work on the plantation. Africans came now in the same uh, environment and see what the Indians did. Because every time the Indians come from work, in light in chalice. He have a hard day work in light in chalice and him pray to Goddess Kali. With him, with, you know, because the chanting of Jarastafari come from Jai Kalimai. 
and he come down to Jerusalem. Every time the Indian light him chalice, him prays to the goddess Kali, and him chant Jakali Mai, which is interpreted as Jarastafari in Rastafari language. So a lot of things with Indian influence and how the culture come about. Come remember, you know, the Africans never bring ganja to Jamaica. Indians carry it. Indian carry ganja seed, he carry ganja with him. And that is why Howell Pinnacle became the biggest ganja plantation in Jamaica and was suppressed. Thank you for watching I Never Knew TV. Please subscribe, comment, like, and